just wanna lap dance. You just wanna pop up on these pants like you the Batman. You just wanna. Happy Women's History Month, you beautiful nerds. The new Matt Reeves directed Bat Flick starring Robert Pattinson is out and about, and it's definitely been out long enough where I don't feel bad about spoiling it. Regardless, there are spoiler warnings all over the place, because I don't want to dive into this story without worrying about dodging spoiler landmines. So grab a seat and a criminal to beat the shit out of, and let's have a quick chat about but first, prelude, 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 prelude. In the year of our Lord 2017, Matt Reeves was hired to direct a Batman movie for Warner Brothers starring Ben Affleck. It's hard to believe that this movie was announced so long ago and looked like a completely different movie at the time. Ben Affleck was first set to direct and star in the movie, but then stepped down as the director and Matt Reeves took the job. Then shortly after, Ben Affleck officially announced that he wouldn't be reprising his role as the Batman and that Matt Reeves was gonna be doing his own thing. I'm not as in love with the eight movies as other people, so I wasn't excited about this movie, really. I was meh on the director. The costume looked a little too Gotham by Gaslight for me. From the cast, it seemed like there were way too many villains. And in the images that they released of Bruce Wayne, Robert Pattinson looked like freaking Bully McGuire. Whoa, 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 take it easy, sweetheart. You want forgiveness? Get religion. But I was blown away by how different a Batman movie this was compared to what we're used to seeing. I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that this is the first time we've seen a Batman story like this one on the big screen. So let's talk about what we're talking about. What happens in this movie? What What's this Batman movie about? Two years in fighting crime, Batman comes across a mass serial killer called the Riddler, who is murdering political figures in Gotham and leaving messages for Batman at every crime scene. As Batman gets closer to unraveling this mystery, he also unearths a family secret that will change the way he sees his late parents forever. I liked the story in this one. I heard that Matt Reeves wanted to make this more of a detective story, but I wasn't expecting a straight up hard boiled private eye noir flick. As I've mentioned on this channel before, or maybe I haven't, I don't know. I be smoking, I be, I be forgetting shit. Old school noir films are my shit, and that's probably why I appreciated this style so much. I get why it might not be everybody's jam, but I fucking love it. I do have to admit, even though I like the voiceover and it just adds to that noir vibe, it did seem a little like, it, it just reminded me of this scene for Community. Where there's time full or enjoy, I'm there. But sometimes I'm not because I'm out at night. Getting over that hump and leaving Abed Nadir in the rear view, I think it helped me divorce this from any idea that this movie might be humorous. This kind of parallels the first time we see Batman in the Dark Knight, but this movie takes itself a lot more seriously. Shit is actually scary. From the opening scene, you can tell this isn't going to be as tongue in cheek as the Nolan films. The Nolan films were shot more like a James Bond movie, where this film is shot more like a horror thriller. It seems like Matt Reeves told his DP Greg Frazier make it look like a David Fincher flick. Cause this movie definitely follows all of the David Fincher rules of directing. Not just visually, which yeah, definitely. This movie looks just like Seven meets Mindhunters. But also how it treats the vibe of each scene. How he treats the relationship between the characters and the reaction to the situation that they're in. Every scene you direct behavior over time. It's a fraction. Look at the behavior. It has nothing to do with how long that scene is. If this behavior is fascinating, then you're successful. In the same vein of 1960s and 70s crime thrillers and David Fincher's style, this flick takes its time with some of the more dramatic moments. It doesn't look as good as a David Fincher film, but if David Fincher is a band, this movie is a greatest hits mashup by a pretty damn good cover band. Basically, it's not the greatest song in the world. This is just a tribute. Go outside, nerd. Get out. Go. I'm obsessed with the score from this film. They really hit you over the head with a theme, which I love. All of my favorite theme songs from movies, Jurassic Park, Beverly Hills Cop, Indiana Jones, they play the shit out of the theme songs for their main character, and I think that just helps establish the tone of the hero. And this theme just oozes Batman. The song itself feels like a mixture of the Imperial March and the score from Inception. It's a perfect blend of spooky and foreboding and triumphant. Anyway, let's talk about these crazy characters that inhabit Gotham City. Andy Serkis as Alfred was fine. Either we didn't get enough of him or I didn't care for him that much. I'm not 
I'm not sure yet. Obviously, he has a rapport with Matt Reeves from playing Caesar in the 8 movies, so I'm sure that had some influence on how he got cast in this movie, but he didn't blow me away in this. Again, it's probably because he isn't in the movie that much. Bruce isn't really accepting Alfred as a loved one for most of the story. His vibe is pretty much this scene from Batman Begins, like the whole movie. This house, Master Wayne, has sheltered six generations of your family. Why do you give a damn, Alfred? It's not your family. So maybe in the next one, we'll get some of that charming back and forth we love so much from these two. I have no clue why Colin Farrell got cast as the Penguin, but he was great. In fact, he was like the only funny part of this movie. I'm very curious how this casting choice happened. I mean, I'm sure that every fat, ugly actor from the East Coast is probably pissed that Hollywood did that thing again where they just put a beautiful person in ugly person makeup. I mean, I love Colin Farrell. In Bruges is one of my favorite movies ever, and his performance in this was extremely lively. Like, you could tell he was having a whole bunch of fun. And the makeup itself was phenomenal. There are a few scenes where I, like, I, I legitimately forgot who I was looking at. All that being said, the question still must be asked. I still haven't heard that story. So if you if you know that story, please leave it in the comments. Jeffrey Wright, uh, oh my God, I love Jeffrey Wright as Jim Gordon. His performance was great, but what I really loved was the relationship between him and Batman. This is probably the most they've worked together in any live action movie. You can tell they've built up a certain trust between each other, and that trust is not shared throughout the rest of the police department. The tension is fucking palpable when Batman is around the other cops. It's kind of look at him like that guy, you remember that guy who couldn't take his Batman mask off, and he was always, he, like he always had to have it on? Or are you delusional? Do, or do you suffer from a mental illness? Do you think I don't you care do? about that? Any of that? Dude is a straight up freak, and I like the fact that they take the time to show him next to normal people so much. It's like, yeah. This dude is fucking nuts. But you can also deduce that the whole brothers in blue camaraderie gives Gordon some rope on the whole, inviting a vigilante to a crime scene thing. Paul Dano as Riddler was pretty good. I like how his character pretty much succeeded in everything he was trying to do. Batman got the small victory in the end because everyone didn't die, but a lot of people did die, and Gotham is in fucking shambles at the end of the movie. In fact, if Riddler didn't plan for Batman to just like sit back and chill with him at Arkham and watch all the other madness happened, he probably would have made a contingency to kill Batman too. The scene with Riddler and the Joker at the end did feel kind of tacked on. It wasn't annoying or anything. It was just the only fan service -y moment in the movie. This kind of fan service, not, not, not this kind of fan service. I do like that apparently Joker has a relationship with Batman already. It's cool that they've already had some sort of interaction because I don't think we've had a live action movie where Batman and Joker see each other for the second time. Like, we haven't gotten that sense of futility from Batman that he has to keep fighting this guy over and over and over again. At least not in the live action movies. I'm curious to see how that relationship is gonna pan out, especially since I'm, I'm a big fan of that actor who's playing Joker. But there's also like a gazillion Batman villains. Can we can we get some of those please? Can we get a Mr. Zazz? Can we get a Clayface? In this movie they do that thing where a villain is a mirror of the hero. But we're not so different, you and I. You and I are not so different. Hermano. You and me, we know so different. But they really hammer home the fact that the biggest difference between the two of them is that Bruce Wayne is wealthy. Though Bruce had it rough, there's a whole building full of orphans who had it way worse. Yes, Batman fights crime and Riddler commits it, but makes no mistake, neither of them are handling their childhood drama in a healthy way. Zoe Kravitz was magnetic as Selina Kyle. I don't feel like her and Robert Pattinson had a lot of romantic chemistry, but I think that's mostly because Bruce's socially inept in this story. This is the third time we've had a black woman play Catwoman and I feel like her being a POC played more into the differences between her and Batman and how Bruce is still judging everything at face value at this point in his career. I like how the script plays with the fact that she's the most morally fluid character in the movie. I really dug the inclusion of having her drink milk in this scene. It's an obvious nod to like I mean, cats like milk, duh. But in film, milk is also symbolically seen as a sign of innocence. Sometimes used as a creepy contrast, and sometimes used as a way of showing that a character may not be as rough around the edges as they appear. I think this is put in there to show that she's not just some thug looking for cash. And that maybe Bruce should be taking a closer look at how he treats criminals and how he sees crime in general. Catwoman has always been a conflict for Bruce in the comics because he likes her, but she's a criminal, but all criminals are bad, but 
maybe not her, but uh, I just want to fuck. But in this, it's not necessarily his attraction to her that creates his conflict. It's that she's a good person who's never really had any options in life who happens to be breaking the law. She pretty much serves as a morality plot device for Bruce. In Batman Begins, Bruce kind of learns this lesson immediately. I lost many assumptions about the simple nature of right or wrong. But in this story, Selina and Edward are the ones who humble him. Cause Bruce in this story is very much on some young, rich, angry white boy energy. The whole movie is about Bruce stripping away his idea of what Batman is and realizing what the Batman should be going forward. Speaking of which, before we talk about the big black bat, let me for a brief moment gush over Robert Pattinson. When he got cast, I was like, Really? Cause the only thing I'd seen him in was the Twilight movies. Let's just check out this Robert Pattinson dude and see what he's been up to since Twilight. Yes, 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 we'll still shoot at presidents. Quiet me, red me, laid out on me. Giant balls with the tiny cock. <laughs> oh my God. This guy's fucking good. Robert P. Batman is one of the weirdest actors I've ever seen. And when I say weird, I'm mostly talking about the films he chooses to do. Cause every movie he's done since Twilight has been insane. I was already eager to see what kind of Batman movie this was gonna be. Cause this guy only does movies about weirdos. Hearing him talk about playing Batman is more interesting than any other actor I've heard talk about playing that character. Cause Robert Pattinson understands that Bruce is a straight up freak and and that's good, because he really seems to gravitate towards these broken, traumatized characters. It's funny, because I was kind of thinking, you know, no one really wants to see the origin story anymore and see Bruce's parents die. And then you end up thinking, because that scene's not there, I've basically got to play his parents' death on my face every single scene. <laughs> when I heard him say this, I thought that's an incredible choice, but I feel like every Batman actor should have been doing this. Whether you have the safety net of that death scene or not, you still have to show that anger and that pain. And I feel like Pattinson is the best Batman actor under the mask that I've ever seen. All the other actors felt like they just stopped acting once they put the Batman mask on. But you can dissect every bit of what he's feeling the whole time because he's wearing it on his face face the whole movie. Christian Bale has admitted that he felt stupid in the costume and was more intrigued by the character of Bruce Wayne and the whole duality of man thing. The what? The duality of man, the Jungian thing, sir. But this isn't so much a Jekyll and Hyde story like some of the other Batman movies. Robert P. Batman fully embraced the character and he looks the most comfortable in the suit out of anyone I've ever seen. I also appreciate that they showed that he puts the black face paint on under the mask. In other movies, they pretend it's not even there. Most notably in Batman Returns when he has makeup on and then they cut away and then they cut back and he doesn't have the makeup on anymore. I remember seeing that as a kid and being like, what, what the fuck, well, why did, what happened? I don't know if filmmakers just thought it made him look silly, but I think it just adds to the realism. It also adds to the whole, I don't give a fuck vibe. Cause he doesn't even wipe his face paint off before he moves on to the next thing when he's in the back cave. Little details like this that give us insight on how fucked up Bruce is, collectively tells a marvelously sad story. Cause speaking of sad, at the start of this movie, Bruce is in a weird place. B.B. Jackson's condo? No. A children's clothing store in Dubai? Just stop guessing. He's like, you know what I mean? He's like in a weird place emotionally. Dude is not doing so hot. He's still kind of new at this Batman stuff, so he has fully thrown himself into being Batman. He has no interest in being Bruce Wayne. He only wants to be Bruce Wayne when it helps him do Batman stuff. We don't get charismatic, suave Bruce in this movie because he hasn't learned how to put on that playboy facade yet. And that's simply because he doesn't give a shit. He basically tells Alfred to fuck off for even implying that he should spend more time like wearing normal clothes. This is probably the most unwell we've ever seen Bruce, which is great because I feel like it's one of the most compelling and personal arcs we've seen for this character. I mean, he's obviously gotten really good at the crime fighting aspect of being Batman, but he's yet to learn how to inspire hope in the people of Gotham. Because right now, everybody's afraid of him, even the good guys. And it's because he's just putting out hate and anger into the world. It's not until he meets Selina and the Riddler does he start to see that he needs to change the way he does this whole superhero thing, which is why it surprised me that so many people thought that the last action sequence felt tacked on because I feel like Bruce's arc isn't complete without that scene. Not only does he organically out of desperation kind of invent one of his most iconic gadgets, 
the smoke bombs. Guarantee he has smoke bombs in the next flick, by the way. But in the final moments of this scene, he realizes that beating the shit out of poverty-stricken, mentally unstable people isn't what's gonna save the city. He has to terrify the bad, but also inspire the good. He even has a very symbolic baptism and comes out a whole new person. God damn, this script is so fucking good. Also, I feel like the scene after Batman catches Joker in the Dark Knight is paced way worse than the last scene in this movie. Yeah, I said it. The Dark Knight is not a perfect movie. I mean, this movie isn't either, but I'm just saying. When you rewatch that movie, how often do you turn it off after this scene is over? Because I fucking always do. I mean, I could spend a whole video talking about the problems with The Dark Knight, but that's not that's not what this video is about. And luckily, there's already a YouTube channel dedicated to all that. There is one sin in this movie that I can't forgive, and that is Bruce Wayne's hair. His hair looks fucking dumb in this movie. I get that it's like a character choice. He's like devoted to the crime fighting thing in this movie, so he probably doesn't even give a shit about cutting his hair. But Robert Pattinson has incredible hair. It's like perplexingly good. Like, I, it's so good I don't even understand it. Why would you do this to his hair in this movie? That's just mean. In all seriousness, this movie does have problems, but nothing that ruined the film for me. All the themes resonated for me throughout, and despite a few minor plot holes, the story was pretty solid. You could see this movie as an allegory for false allyship. You could see this as an allegory for police reform. You could see this as an allegory for the futility of trusting a corrupt system. You could see this as a lot of shit, because this movie is doing a lot of shit. But you could also see this as a grisly mystery thriller, because it's also kind of just that at the end of the day. This was a remarkable Batman movie. It's probably the least fun Batman movie, and people aren't really used to that, because we haven't seen this Bruce Wayne in a movie before. But I've read this version of Batman a few different times. Batman has not always been the perfect wise person that we picture when we hear the words Cape Crusader. He was young once and he's made mistakes and went through a phase where he took himself way too seriously. But this is a story about Bruce finding his humanity before he really goes off the deep end and loses himself to the mission. I think I read a tweet somewhere that said I feel weird telling my kid that the new Batman movie isn't for children. But you know what? Not every Batman graphic novel is for kids. Some of them get really fucking twisted but there's still a bunch of batman stories out there that kids can read and there's still a bunch of batman movies out there that kids can watch we all have our favorite version of old long ears but this film is a character study of a batman that we've never met before in cinema which is why i understand why so many people don't like this one there is some valid criticism out there for the depiction of bruce wayne in this movie but i feel like this film is just going the same route as the spider-man home trilogy that everyone loves so fucking much bruce hasn't reached his full potential yet, and the film is very aware of that. The defining factor of Batman a lot of the times is his control over himself, and and he's mastered himself, and in this, he hasn't mastered it at all, but he thinks he has in a lot yeah. of ways. He might be the best at what he does, but he still isn't the best at what he could be. It's gonna take him a while to figure out how to do the job the right way, or at least the way we all know and love. Though he is the only non-murderous live-action Batman we've had other than the one from Batman and Robin. So this Batman gets like a million extra points for doing that without nipples. I won't kill you, but I don't have to save you. It sounds like the Batman movie Ben Affleck was originally going to make would have been a lot more universally liked. That was basically going to be the perfect Batman that we all kind of recognize from the comics. But things didn't turn out that way and this is the movie that we got. Though it is flawed, I still thought that this was an ambitious story about a Batman that doesn't have his shit together quite yet. If you want the charismatic Bruce Wayne, just wait. I'm sure we'll get one in the next flick. Or at least a Batman who is trying to get in touch with his human side. And from the groundwork they've built in this first installment, I'm very excited I had to see what Bat Reeves, Robert Battinson, and Zoe Katz bits. Go outside, nerd. Boo! Get out. Go. I ain't got time to be distracted by your worthless chimes. I can't wait to see this crew go on a spine chilling psychological journey down this dark and dangerous road. Because somehow, this is the darkest night that we've ever gotten, and I'm totally for it. My ranking, I fucking loved it. If you want to hear where this one ranks among my other favorite Batmans, you can listen to the Drunk Banthas podcast episode where me and Bill go over every theatrically released Batman movie and rank them from top to bottom. You should listen. You'll be very surprised by how high I have Batman 66 ranked. And don't forget I also have a Joker analysis video coming out as per fan demand. But anyway, we're done here. Stay safe, my little rats with wings, and may the force be... Oh, hi.
I didn't see you there. Well, thank you for watching another video. While you're still here, go ahead and click the bell thingy and the thumbs up thingy and the, what's another thing you can click? You can click on the comments, put in some comments, talk about what you, oh shit, I lost my bookmark. If there's anything you guys do want me to talk about though, feel free to leave it in the comments. Like, subscribe so you can get updates on new videos and episodes of the pod. Anyway, thanks again. I'll see you next time. May the force be with you.